I'm the coaching coordinator um, for uh, the softball program here and, and help with baseball as well. Um, I coach the gold team uh, here and the 23 youth team uh, that's cooking up. Uh, so a little bit about myself, uh, I have three daughters and uh, I was a baseball coach and I played in college, coached in college as a, um, a scout, a uh, pro baseball scout for, for 12 years. Uh, I teach in high school, uh, so I'm a teacher, so I like to break things down uh, and try to uh, make it pretty simple to understand. Um, so I, uh, as far as uh, I coached high school baseball for 20 years, and at three, my oldest daughter, who's at Westchester right now playing, uh, she's a junior, as she became a ninth grader, then I, I pretty much totally switched over to softball and left the game of baseball in a sense. Um, and uh, just dove into to coaching them. Hannah's a freshman at Delaware. Uh, playing softball, and then Jules is on the recruiting market, uh, so she's a junior in high school. Uh, so they weren't allowed to hit right-handed, they were only allowed to hit left-handed, they slap, they bunt, they try to hit for power, um, and do all those kind of things. So I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm educated in the game, I just constantly, my brother works in pro ball, my dad was my high school coach, my other brother's a high school coach, so over Christmas we'll be talking about hitting, and, uh, and uh, I think the girls are all used to it. Uh, so, um, so I'm here to learn just as much as, as you are uh, as well. So if you have questions, please let me know if you know something a little bit better. Uh, I have a tremendous coaching staff. Uh, Mike Lichtenwalner is here as well. His daughter plays at Bucknell and is one of my assistant coaches. Uh, so he's going to be kind of demoing and everything. So, so I want to give you things that you can use. Um, you know, we sat through some hitting uh, there and you're going to debate your players, your parents, and their hitting coaches to death on philosophy, on mechanics. I wouldn't go there. Um, so what my, my thing is, is okay, there is some absolutes, stay within those absolutes, create drills, okay, to do your talking, okay? For them to be successful in this drill, they have to stay balanced, they have to keep their head in there, they have to create that separation, they have to follow through. Um, you know, so that's the key, because as a travel coach, as a high school coach or whatever, you're, you're gonna meet them twice a week, so you, you can't, you know, you're not like a college coach where you're meeting them every day. And even as a high school coach, it's a, it's a you know, a small period of time. So the first thing is you have kids that go to hitting coaches, make sure you, first thing you do is you go over and say, hey, what are you working on? Because again, you could be saying the exact same thing in a different, well, uh, you could be wanting the same thing, but saying it differently and you're totally confusing. So ask them, show, have them show you before you jump in and confuse them. Okay, so, so that's one of the biggest things because, um, you know, I've coached kids that are in pro ball from high school to college and everything, and they come back and work out in high school. Now they do it in softball, they come back. But the first thing I'm asking them is, okay, what are you guys working on? What's your coach want? Okay, because the Delaware coach wants something different than the Westchester coach. And I can't, I, I gotta let go and I gotta work within those constraints. And that's kind of where you guys are as high school, um, you know, coaches or travel coaches. Um, so, um, so the first thing that, uh, that I want to do is, uh, is go through some dry swings. So they're going to demo again, just this is, is as informal as we can get. So we're going to do dry swings and then we're going to do like T work. Um, then we're going to do some, some front toss work. Uh, everything is kind of listed in here. The way the format is, I'll try to go in order as best I can. Um, but then once we get through everything, we have some conditioning stuff. So right now, at least for our team and probably hopefully for yours, you're doing power stuff, okay? Mechanics can take a little backseat uh, in a sense where we're working on that heavy swings, uh, heavy bats, heavy balls, light bats and stuff. So we've invested in some stuff and then we've kind of rigged some stuff. So you have to figure out what you want to pay for and what you don't, um, but you can see and, and so on. Uh, and then at the end, I have the last nine slides are fixes. So what we try to do is at one station in the, uh, in the cage rotation should be like an individual station, okay? So, so maybe Bree's working on finishing her swing and staying through and, and working more power. Maybe Hannah's just working on her bat path a little bit more. Well, when she goes to that individual station, her drill should be a little different than her drill. So you just gotta do a little homework to figure out what they do and what they don't do. Uh, and then and when you go there at this tee, you're gonna be working on this and you're gonna be working on that, okay? And I have a little form there that what I call is like a hitting plan. So when they go to that station, all the hitting plans are right there. I've already gone over it with them once. I haven't come early or stay late for practice. Just give me five minutes to show them what they're doing so it doesn't interrupt practice. Um, but when they go there, they know exactly what they're working on. And a month later, we change it, okay? So, 
Um, all right, so drive swings wise. Um, so, so as far as, I'm gonna kind of switch around here a little bit. You got a lefty up. So just so you know, as far as a philosophy standpoint, if she's set up here, I'm a big believer on the knob stays down and then the barrel. So I'm not a big believer in the knob goes up and then the barrel goes out. So a lot of times when we, we do stuff here, um, you know, that red is to represent where the knob should go. It's to stay inside the ball. So if she would go down and point the knob there and now swing it inside pitch, okay? And she points the knob down, swing the middle pitch. Okay, point the knob down. So in a sense, the knob, the pivot point, we call this the point, you know, the barrel, the, the knob is stays down and then the bat pivots over. And yes, the most important thing is to stay through the ball path. Um, and then we would do a pump, that's the point drill. These are dry swings. Um, so now we're gonna pump and then inside. So by having visuals here, they're not just swinging out of the zone, they're swinging at actual spots. And just so you know, the middle pitch should always be right off the front foot. The inside should be there, and, and this pitch should be off the front hip or belly button for some, um, but this is kind of the location spots. So we call that the pump. So that's the hitter slot. So we want to keep you know, in that hitter slot. Um, the other thing is power Y. So now we want extension, so she's going to go and just power Y like she's going inside. Power wide middle, power wide down. Just so you know, Hannah's more of a power hitter, so you're gonna see a little bit more upper swing. Bree's more of a slapper, um, you know, lead off hitter, um, and, and so on, so a little bit more line drive hitter. Okay, so those are some dry swings. Now, Hannah's working on this, the Delaware coaches have her doing this, so she wants to come over. Um, let me switch this. So keeping the barrel through the ball, very simple drill that you can create. Technically it should be a little higher, uh, we're just trying to work with, so, so basically she's doing is to emphasize the ball path, so this is a dry swing, so she's going to go slow through, pushing the ball, and through, okay? So we typically set the ball right at her belly button, where she's going to get on plane, Okay. Again, you can change the height of this. Okay, she wants to work above the ball. Now at the end, right at the end, she's gonna snap her top hand through, really create bat life, and try to hit this ball then at the end. So she's going slow, and then she's gonna snap through, and then hit that. And so now she's trying to snap it beyond that ball. Technically, I put the baseball in there because I do private lessons and I work with baseball kids too, but we've kind of created other things with it. Okay, so uh, it emphasizes we want to stay through five balls, say maybe a contact's one ball, two balls behind, two balls in front. So we want to, no matter what you do, that's the most important thing in my mind as far as staying through the ball path for success. Okay, all right, Jules, this is your time. All right, so lower half drills. So we're going to do a half turn. So go ahead and put the bat on your. So what this is is to work on um, her lower half. So we call it the stick drill as well. So her back foot's going to gain ground, and she's going to do a half turn. Okay. So her goal is to kind of come weightless on the back foot, keep her head in the center of her body, and drive that back knee down. Okay, so we call it a half turn. The swing's not finished, but... And if you look, she should have somewhat of a straight line here, okay? Knee down, driving down. So we're driving down. We're trying to get away from pushing over top, hitting ground balls, topping the balls, thinking that we're gonna hit it further and higher. You're not, you're gonna top the ball, okay? Uh, and the way we're creating a little bit extra power is again, this foot here. So a lot of things we do is overemphasize. So do we want that foot to go that far? Maybe not, but we definitely would like it to come, you know, an inch or two. Okay, and then now she's gonna do a full turn. Okay, so now we should see her back to the plate. Okay, so she's still lower half looking very similar, but we want her finish her swing. So we want full velocity through contact, 
Okay? And her head te technically should be straight ahead. There's no way you're going to keep it at the ball on, on this drill. Okay? One thing that we're working with Jules, because she slaps a lot, her hips slide. Okay? So we're trying to get rid of the slide. So we do a torque drill with her. So torque one, two, and three. I haven't gotten creative with the, the naming of this, but she's going to keep the bat down. And we want this hip to go back first and then that knee to start dropping. So, so she works on this, so we want to keep the bat straight and we're just creating on, that should be the first lower half movement. So again, these are all dry swings, no ball. Okay, and then she's gonna hold the bat vertical. Okay, now she's gonna to torque. And again, it's just creating that first movement, that is hip rotation and keeping her hands back. Because if you have slappers, you're going to see like a slap regular swing together sometimes if you don't separate. It's two separate swings in a sense. And then she's going to put the bat up. And she's just going to torque. Okay. So I could just stand here and hold, or they can just put your hand in there. And then I'm just going to hold her hands back for some resistance. Okay. So again, these are all dry swings, and uh, this is uh, what I would suggest you do at the beginning of every practice. So uh, if you dry swing for the first 10, 15 minutes or whatever, you're gonna get some, you know, your concepts down when everybody, you're circling around, you have them lined up, set up cones, whatever it might be, okay? So now we're gonna get into the bat pass. So I have uh, the bat pass. Is there any questions on dry swings or anything to add? Okay, so here's a drill that, um, and, and again, I'll reference these. Say if you have somebody that doesn't stay through the ball path or something like that, we'll reference back and you can see where these drills could be plugged in for someone that has an issue. So this one's going to be a uh, short bat, one knee. So Bree's going to be down on one knee using the short bat. Um, go back knee down. Yep. And she's just, the first couple she's going to swing and extend out through it with one arm. Okay. So she's going to do that. So we would do that. Um, typically, those uh, I have blue buckets. Every station, I have buckets. Like, I don't want balls laying all around. I want the bucket right there filled with six balls. Every time they pick up, they come back with six or whatever balls you have. Um, so then, after she does that, now it's all arms all the way through. So one hand all the way through. Okay, so you can go all the way through now. So pointing, pointing at the pitcher and then all the way through, and then she would do the other hand. You want to jump in? So then, uh, Michael put him on the floor, thanks. And now stop the pitcher. Okay, so now she's kind of not finishing her swing, she's just working on extension. So snapping the top hand over. Okay, and then she would go all the way through. So that, that's path, that path, the first one. Okay. All right, and then she would grab Go back, and you gonna jump in here. So uh, this one is, uh, is is called the point drill. And again, you all right doing this one? So so again, we want the knob down, and that's kind of the point, the pivot point. We call it. We don't want the knob necessarily up or especially over. So she's gonna go down to what we call the bottom of the point, and then she's gonna snap through. So it's all about that top hand snapping through, staying through the ball pass, creating bat leg. Okay, so that's called the point drill. Then we have the pump drill. The pump drill is, again, emphasizing the hitter slot. Okay, but if your hands get out, those first three inches, the first initial uh, part of the swing is so important. Okay, all right. So then we have slow to contact. This is the uh, uh, fourth drill, so slow to contact back, all back path drills, okay, and then the uh, last one is called the touch drill, so if you have somebody gets long or it's just disconnected, like uh, we use it if they, they're not connected, like their hands are going first, so she's going to keep the bat on the shoulder, and she's going to initiate the swing with her back knee, so we call it the touch drill, so bat on the shoulder, and she's going to swing from there. So even though it engages the lower half, it's a bat pad drill in my sense because it focuses on staying short. Okay, one of the hardest things, and we'll get to this, is if you have a girl that bars their arm, good luck. 
know what I mean? Because it's like a throwing action. Like, it's one of the hardest things to change. So this is one of the drills I love to do with girls that bar that front arm. Okay? All right, Jules. All right, so then um, there's two ways we can do this drill. So Mike's just... Uh, so this is going to be just a hands drill in a sense where she's going to go here and she's going to throw the ball down and hit the red spot. Okay, now this could create a little bit of a choppy swing or cut through. So if we have, um, you know, someone, it just depends on the girl in a sense and their swing, which one you would do. Then the other one would be, she, if you want to get girls to level and to get the extension, she would throw it straight ahead about waist high. Okay, just go ahead and finish your swing now. Okay, so just throwing it. Uh, I know sometimes we would put targets on the net, okay? But again, if you have somebody that their first movement's up, um, then you're gonna wanna have them go down. And then we have contests uh, and the downward, and she would try to hit those balls. Okay, and then she would continue. So we call that the the toss drill. All right. Um, all right, Bree, if you want to come on over. Uh, double T. So as a pat, bat path drill, I think everybody kind of understands the concept of double T. Um, here's a way to kind of think of it differently. That's your ball. So, so we want to make sure. So again, the biggest thing I learned from baseball to softball, baseball hits on one plane, eight to 12 degrees. Softball is going to hit possibly on three planes, rise ball, fastball, drop ball. So, um, so one of the things we want to make sure we can do is stay you know, more through the ball and not get under the ball. So that string would under indicate a couple times Hannah got under the ball when she got under the net. So we want to make sure we're above the ball, even with the ball and so on. We don't want to work up because a hard fastball or rise ball I found, you know, it's tough, tough to get to. So, so anyway, he's gonna put a ball on the front of the tee. Okay, she got this. So her goal is not to hit that ball. Okay, so um, so that's how you could use double tee. Obviously, you could hit through, you know, both balls, double tee. Just be careful because the second ball is gonna ricochet, uh, you know, sometimes. Um, so, and then other times, Again, if you have a girl that really has an issue, then don't put a ball there at all. And then, so we want her just to kind of graze that second, first tee, and then hit the, okay? So she's a little bit more downward. You can tell her swing's a little bit more line drive on the ground, because she's more of a slap on the ground, uh, line drive. Okay, where again, Hannah and Jules are gonna be more upward. Um, okay, so so those are some, some double tee uh, looks. Is there any questions on like bat path? Um, there's obviously a you know a lot more that you could do, um, but I just want to kind of get everything in uh, that we can. All right, so for some lower half drills, so Jules, you want to come over? All right, so. So one of the uh, one of the movements that you'll see professional baseball and, and, and good softball players make is is kind of like a knee to elbow movement. So again, if I was a pitcher and I was pitching, you know, I would have like a knee to elbow movement, a linkage, uh, a load. Uh, you know, they might call it sink and set. Okay. Um, so this is to kind of create that. So if you have girls that don't use the lower half well, this is called knee to elbow. Or if you have somebody that just awkwardly doesn't look right, it could be knee to knob. Okay, but it's that movement. So she's gonna shuffle. These are lower half drills now. Shuffle, knee to elbow. Again, to create a little bit, a uh, little exaggeration. Okay, you wouldn't necessarily want your knee to hit your elbow, but go ahead and knee touch the elbow. So we try to overemphasize it first, and then now just go half leg lift. Okay. And now, just to emphasize, just to show maybe a difference, and, and we haven't done this a whole lot with Jules, but knee to knob. So instead of knee to elbow, it's knee to knob. So it creates a little bit more hand movement. So um, the other one with this is you can just do straight um, knee. So we, we typically do like three touching, three half, and then three like one inch away. So 
This would be touching your knee, so knee and elbow touching. Okay, and then we do three of those. And now we do three halfway. Okay, and then now Jules um, kind of had transformation where she had that leg kick, but then we took it away a little bit, her timing was off. That's gonna be your biggest issue with kind of that leg lift. So now she's gonna come up on a toe or just like an inch and go. But we still want that linkage. We still want that, that kind of sink and set that, that kind of powers them up. And it sets the front shoulder. Okay? All right, that's good. So who's next? So another lower half is, is the stick. Uh, well, actually, we'll wave on that. Is, uh, is gonna be, uh, uh, she's gonna jump back to kind of get that load here to kind of create it. She's gonna jump back and then swing to kind of get a little load. Back. Actually, don't bring your leg up first. So it's here, jump back, and then the leg naturally comes up. So jump back. Oh, just one foot. Just keep your feet a little narrow. A little bit narrow. Yeah. So jump back on your back leg. Jump, just jump back and go. Don't bring your leg back. It's, it's kind of here and low. Okay, so we're getting the emphasis of drive, kind of pushing through a little bit, getting a little bit more drive. Okay. All right, Pete was talking a little bit about this, this session. Now, go with the separation. So, so now your, your feet are together, okay? And then you're gonna separate and then look to swing. Separate and swing. Okay, stay centered. Your head should move about the distance of your stride movement there. Okay, so that's what we call tall to fall. Okay, and then we have just the old like we warmed up. So now she's just going to swing and gain ground on her back foot. So we call it the stick drill. Okay, so again, a little bit more power hitter. Um, so her swing is a little bit, you know, gets on playing a little earlier, a little more upward. Okay, and then actually has a little bit more of a leg uh, load and, and everything. Okay, um, Jules, if you want to come over, I'm gonna skip through here for a second. Okay, Jules has been working on this. So, so again, we did this torque drill. We did this torque drill. So she's gonna stride torque. So if you have a girl that's just upper body swinging, not getting on time with her lower half, or so she's gonna torque and then swing. Okay, so there's the uh, torque drill. Um, so we can also, if we want to create a little resistance, uh, I have this listed if you have someone that's a lunger or their weight's going too far, uh, we can create a little resistance. So this is just uh, swinging regular, but creating resistance. So again, if you have someone that's going forward or front foot hitter, Okay, all right, if you want to jump in here. Uh, these you can create, or I bought these, I think $2 each. Um, so what Bree's gonna do is crisscross these in her knees. So what this does is it creates a good solid base. Again, if you have someone overloading, because us as parents and coaches, they stay back, so what do we do? We're back here now, we mean hands stay back. So you want the head, you want to be symmetrical here, uh, head in the middle of your feet. So this kind of helps her stay centered. Okay, so we want the knees together. If you ever have a kid that really gets separate with their hands or with their leg or straightens their leg, this is a good way. So I can tell her over and over again to do this, this, and that, but if I put the bands in her on her knees, boom, it, it kind of happens. And then if, if you want more drive off the back leg, I'm gonna step out of that. Well, let's keep this on that way. So now she's going to here. Put on your foot, okay, and then this is going to come up to her knee. So it's going to force her to drive her back knee down. Okay, so it's kind of weird to think that you're driving down to hit the ball out, but that's the kind of as opposed to here or over here. So driving the back knee down and then. 
So bands can be pretty useful. Okay. Um, and then, uh, who's next? I'm gonna grab the net ball. So coach, can you catch the net ball for him? So also to help with the lower half, we can, uh, like, they're gonna bounce it. I'm not setting you up there. Okay, so Hannah's gonna be right there. Coach is gonna be right here. So you can do up against the wall. I prefer up against the wall in this because it'll be violent. Um, but if you get, if you have a coach or they can partner it back and forth. But so now it's like she's shooting a you know a foul shot, but it's right here, and then she's driving down. So elbow up a little bit. Yeah. So she's gonna throw it and bounce it to him. Yep. So she's working on maybe sticking the finish a little bit to make sure she's there. I found that by throwing it straight in the air, it creates too much arm action. We want her whole body to be linked. We want it to go down. Okay. All right. So, so those are lower half, lower half drills that, that could be used. Um, what we're going to do is get in and show you some stuff in front toss and other stuff that I think is pretty basic that you can just visualize. Um, so, if who's up? Okay. So we're simulating that we're in the cage right now, we're doing front toss. What's that? Uh, I'm gonna get you in the cage in a moment. Um, so for uh, front toss, so inside middle, eyes. so when you're doing front toss, I would just make sure you have a purpose every time. And if we have three, we're fortunate to have front of cages here. But if you're doing, I would split your cage in half and make sure you have a hitter there, a hair there, and then have two front tosses. Like if you only have one cage at school or travel, you know, put something in the middle, put a hitter there, hitter there, and then make sure you have a front tosser there and there so you can utilize your, your space. But, um, so if I was the front tosser, we're just doing a couple here so you can be quick. So we're working on inside. So I would pretty much make sure that um, I'm hitting the inside part of the play. Okay, and then we'd say, okay, this could be just inside station or I'm gonna work in, out, and then so I'm gonna do three here, so I would do three inside. All right, now we're gonna work on outside, and then we go outside, uh, and then middle. If you have somebody that's having like timing issues or connection issues, so I would say, okay, so outside pitch, you gotta let it travel a little bit more. Show me where you make contact with an outside pitch. Okay, now back, and then I would, I would throw. Okay, so make sure you identify if they're hitting out front or even on an inside pitch and they're hitting here, make sure they show you where they're making contact. Um, another uh, way you could run front toss is I'm gonna work in, out, in, out, in, out. Okay, so I would go in, he would hit that one, out, and I would go back and forth, and then I would just say, hey, now I'm gonna mix it up. Okay, um, so there, there's a drill that comes down the down the road that uh, is on here, it's like sitting on pitches. So if we if you have a girl that's uh, not able to throw a rise ball for a strike or a changeup, so we're gonna not swing at that pitch. Okay, you have to kind of um, you know set your girls up to say, okay, all right, Bree, so we're not gonna hit the inside pitch here, or you know, so basically I might throw inside and she has to learn to take that pitch and then sit on, okay, not guess, sit on an outside pitch. And really, you're not just working on outside pitches here, you're working on sitting on a pitch and saying yes to one pitch and recognizing it and saying no to another pitch. Um, another thing that I think we can just simulate without being in there, change-ups. I would, you know, especially at a higher level, I'd make sure you're always working on change-ups in a sense where, like, in a front toss situation, you, you might do, like, okay, stride and wait, stride and wait and then I'm gonna swing it. So you're setting her up for being slow, under control, and then exploding through. Um, now I might say, okay, stride and torque. Stride and torque, and then I would throw it. So I'm setting her up from a timing issue. I want the same swing, but there's a timing issue in between. And then, as a front tosser, and again, we're on the third one under front toss, fast, slow. Um, so I would throw a fast ball, and she would hit it. And then change up. And then I would call a change up, okay? Uh, and all I do is just throw it with a you know, little less velocity. Um, and then I would call them out so she gets used to hitting them, and then I would basically mix it up. Okay, so I'm gonna mix it up. We might say that we're early in the count and saying, hey, we're only hitting fastballs, so she's gonna sit on a fastball. So anytime I would throw a changeup, she won't swing. 
okay? Uh, so we're not gonna hit it change ups early, okay? Uh, only with two strikes. And then you might say, hey, we got two strikes now. So we're gonna hit fastballs and change ups. Okay, so she has to hit, you know, a fastball or a change up in, in that case. All right, so um, uh, as far as, Hannah, if you wanna jump in there. Um, so this is one to specifically, one of the pitches that probably gets thrown to your girls more than anything is an outside pitch. One of the struggles that kids have is an outside pitch. So I'm gonna show you three kind of steps here to work on the outside pitch. So the first one, the key with this is you wanna have this part of the plate right to the coach, okay? So she's gonna be here. So coach is gonna throw it right on this line and she's gonna to try to hit it up the middle. So it allows her to hit the ball deep, hit the ball like in an outside part of the play. Okay, so it's simulating an outside pitch, hitting it straight up. So you get instant feedback if you're going up the net. Okay, so you work on, we call this, uh, just can you switch the slide? So this is angle toss. So, all right, so then this same station, you're working with the same girl, you ask her to switch the plate and teach your kids how to turn the plate. So now this part of the plate is lined up. And now we call this cross toss, number two. Now show, show coach where you make contact with an outside part. So now she's trying to hit this ball towards me, okay? So it's cross toss. Okay, she's so got to let it travel a little further. Sometimes we'll put a little like red pad there, a cone, just so they know where contact would be. Okay, and then she would square up the plate and then work on just outside pitches. So, so that could be one front toss station where they turn the plate.